This video will help you become an excellent student even if you struggle staying focused. Is someone who really struggled with ADHD and lack of motivation in school? Oh look, there's a squirrel. Uh, sorry, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I tried out and tested almost every possible study method available to me. It took me over eight years of struggling and failing from one method to another until I finally figured out how to study despite my severe attention problems. And it worked out so well for me that I ended up graduating as the number one best high school student in my entire country. And later, I also ended up at Harvard and MIT. The reason why none of the commonly used study methods worked for me was because I simply lacked focus, motivation and discipline to sit down and have a productive study session. Some of the most successful students that I've met, they never really implemented any advanced study methods. All they had to do was take a book, read it once or twice, maybe take some notes and they would ace all of their exams. The secret to their success was an incredible focus. If you're not fortunate enough to be one of these people with incredible focus, don't worry, you are in no way worse than they are. Your brain is just wired a bit differently. And all you have got to do is find a clever study method to use your brain's fullest potential. And if you are one of the people with incredible focus, you should still watch this video because you can learn how to become even better. There are two key components to successfully studying. Memorization and understanding. In order to successfully study, you have to become good at both of these. When I say understanding, your first thought may be physics or mathematics. When I say memorization, you might be thinking about history or learning a foreign language. But the truth, the, the truth, is, the truth, is, the truth is that in order to learn anything, you always need both of these components. Understanding and memorization. Throughout my physics studies, I had to study incredibly complex concepts in quantum mechanics. My quantum mechanics exam was by far the most difficult thing I've done in my entire life. Just for this exam alone, I had to study for six months, eight hours per day. Stupid fly. My friends and I spent the first five months just with understanding. That is going through the concepts, writing them up, explaining them to each other until they eventually made sense. And I could have stopped after these five months. After all, I understood everything, right? But what is the point of understanding something if you cannot actually memorize it for a long time? Well, I would have most likely failed my quantum mechanics exam if I hadn't spent the last month trying to memorize all of the hundreds of complex concepts that I now finally understood. Therefore, stupid fly again. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill it! Get out of here. Bastard. Therefore, I decided to make this video specifically about memorization. Whether you're a high school student trying to study history, or maybe a college student studying computer science, or an adult trying to learn a new language, in this video I will show you the scientifically proven most effective way of memorizing. Let me know in the comments down below if you would like me to make a video about understanding complex concepts in science, engineering and mathematics. And also while you're there you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the video once I upload it. For a start I'm going to walk you through three study methods which are extremely common but not very effective for people who struggle to focus. I personally used these methods from primary school until roughly 7th grade. The number one worst study method is rereading. Obviously this is one of the easiest and laziest way of studying. And many publications have shown that this is also one of the most commonly used study methods. While this may work for someone with superhuman focus, when I start reading anything that isn't very interesting, after three sentences my mind just goes Phew! And then my eyes just continue going through the lines of the text and usually after a page or two I just realize that I have no idea what I just read. Method number two is highlighting. Now obviously this is a lot better than just reading a text because having to decide which parts of the text are worth highlighting and which aren't makes you focus at least a little bit. So at least your eyes won't just continue going through the text while your brain is actually pew. But at the same time, this is not a very effective study method if you cannot focus. Because first of all, it doesn't force you enough to focus. And secondly, in all of these studies, it has been shown that this is not a very good method for memorization. Method number three is creating mind or concept maps. Uh, actually, why am I wearing headphones? Method number three is creating mind or concept maps. Now, I personally spend an excessive amount of time carefully drawing all of these. And with my complete lack of focus on the actual subject, my brain would become fully occupied with drawing all of these little pictures and branches. This study from 2011, amongst others, has shown that creating concept maps at best marginally improves exam scores compared to rereading or highlighting. I mostly worked with these methods until 7th grade. And I was a really bad student. 
Now that I've shown you the three methods that are not very effective, let's talk about one more effective but not super effective method. And after this, I will show you an upgrade to this method, which is the main reason why I managed to graduate as the number one best student in my entire country, despite serious ADHD. Method number four is summarizing and making notes. This is a method that I started using in 8th grade and I still use it from time to time even though I know it's not super effective. This method is clearly an improvement over reading and highlighting because it requires you to think about what you read, understand it and then summarize it and write it down. The process of understanding something is super important for the human brain. To demonstrate this let's try a little experiment. I'm going to give you a bunch of letters here and you have 4 seconds to remember as many of them as you can. Are you ready? Here they are. Were you able to remember them? Well, neither was I. Let's try this again. I'm going to shuffle the same letters and you again have 4 seconds to remember as many as possible. Here they are. Were you able to remember everything? Well, I wasn't able to remember everything, but I do remember some of the words and therefore I can also remember some of the letters. So let's try this one last time. I'm going to again shuffle the same letters and you have again 4 seconds to remember as many as possible. Are you ready? Here they are. All three of these were the exactly same letters, just in different order. The first time it was completely random. There was no meaning to this so you could also not remember much. The second time there were some random words. They didn't form a complete sentence but at least you could remember some of it. And the third time there was a complete sentence and you understood it. And the fact that you understood this was very key to being able to memorize it. Back to summarizing and making notes. The key here is that even though you may be a bit slower than somebody who has great focus, as long as you go through the entire text that you're trying to understand it and summarize everything, you at least went through the mental process of understanding. As long as you do that, even if it takes you longer, you know that you have memorized already something. Until 10th grade, this was as far as I went with my memorization methods. Summarizing and making notes helped me switch from being a failing student in 7th grade to doing just fine in 8th grade. And for some smart people who have an incredible ability to focus, this may even be enough to get them into top schools such as MIT or Harvard. But I certainly wasn't one of these people. The problem with summarizing and making notes is that in order to actually memorize it in the end, you still have to read your notes. And if you struggle focusing, well, reading isn't exactly a great solution for you. Also, the things that you do eventually remember slowly start to disappear from your brain. They don't actually disappear out of your brain, you just struggle finding them inside of your brain. So for example, if you can remember someone's name and then someone reminds you, then you have that ah, I knew it moment. It was always there, you just couldn't find it in your brain. This is the so-called forgetting curve. The basic principle behind the forgetting curve is that everything that you do manage to store inside of your brain undergoes an exponential decay. It's kind of like radioactive decay if you're into that. How quickly this exponential decay happens, it depends on a variety of factors, but mostly on how often you go through the material and when you repeat it. So let's go back to 10th grade me. I was doing okay in school but I was still kind of struggling. And the solution to my struggles, which drastically changed my life in so many ways, came from my mom. One day in 10th grade she came to me and told me about a software called Anki. Anki is the only software for which I would seriously say that it changed my life. It is open source and a simple but yet powerful algorithm is based on active recall and space repetition techniques. Anki has a completely free browser, Windows, Mac and Android app. If you want to use it on an iPhone, I think you have to pay around $25, but at least for me personally, these $25 will one day have been a better investment than buying a winning lottery ticket. So does Anki work? What can you use it for? And how does it work? To answer the first question, other than my own very positive experience, we can look at studies such as this one. They found that there is a very significant increase in exam scores among students who use study methods, which the Anki algorithm is based on. The answer to the second question is, you can use Anki for learning anything. I used it for studying history or languages in high school, but I also used it for advanced differential geometry and quantum mechanics in college. Lastly, how does Anki actually work? Well, Anki is essentially an upgrade to method number four. That is an upgrade to summarizing and making notes. But instead of putting your notes on a piece of paper, you directly put them in the form of Q&A cards into your computer. When it comes to creating the Q&A cards for, for example, history or a language, the process of understanding the content isn't very hard and therefore you will also very quickly be able to create the cards. But on the other hand, the process of memorizing them will take a bit longer. When it comes to creating Q&A cards for, for example, physics and mathematics, the process of understanding is very hard. 
Therefore, it will also take you a long time to create all of these Q&A cards. But once you've created them, memorizing them should be quite easy. So let's have a look at a few examples of how Anki works in practice on my phone. Over here, since I'm a bit lazy and don't want to create everything manually, I have a whole collection of different topics with different decks. Now I'm just going to click on Geography. Now here you can see a few examples of decks. So the word deck essentially just means a collection of Q&A cards that belong to one specific topic. You can obviously create all of them manually, which in practice you will have to do eventually, but just for testing purposes I'm going to pick countries in the world, I can download this deck and then I can directly get started with studying some countries in the world. So I downloaded this, when I open the deck, here I have it already open, I select countries of the world, I can just directly start answering the questions. So here this is an easy one, which country is in the following location, I think this is Bhutan, not sure if I'm spelling it correctly, I do. And now what I can do here, I can choose how easy it was for me to remember that. So if I don't know it, I would just push the red button and after one minute it would ask me again about the same thing so I can memorize it. But this was fairly easy for me, so I'm just going to select four days. So that means four days from now, it is going to ask me the same question again. The same thing over here, I have a flag and I have to figure out which country that is. Now I think this is Hungary, even though there are a few countries with similar flags, so I'm not 100% sure, I'm just going to type this in. And yeah, I got it right, although I wasn't completely sure, so I would maybe select the green one and have it again after 10 minutes. I can also do this for something else. For example, let's go to, not graph theory, but let's choose quantum field theory. That sounds very fancy. So under quantum field theory, I have a question that is obviously a bit different than just memorization. Here it's asking me for the full derivation of the quantum model of the hydrogen atom. Now obviously, if I hadn't studied that for a long time, I would have no idea how this works. And actually just creating this card uh, required me to go through the mental process of understanding how this quantum model of the hydrogen atom works. And obviously getting to that point takes weeks. So I cannot just quickly create that card myself, but here it is. So let me just see what the answer is. I can zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, this is an entire book chapter. Now, obviously the goal of this is not memorizing page by page and letter by letter what exactly this book chapter says. But normally when I would go to such an exercise on quantum mechanics and trying to memorize this, this assumes that I already spent months studying it. And now, you know, when I see this, I would just take a piece of paper and I would start writing down everything that I know about the derivation of the hydrogen atom. And it would probably take me 20 minutes or so. And assuming that I have done it correctly and that all the math worked out, I would just choose if it's four days, easy, 10 minutes, six minutes, or one minute. And if I go through this process many times, you know, eventually I'm going to memorize this and eventually I'll be ready for the exam. So here you saw a few different examples. The first example was just countries in the world, which is purely memorization. So creating such decks, even if you do it yourself, wouldn't take a long time. And the other example was something more on the physics and math side. Here it was very important for me to actually understand everything that they create before making the deck over here. The reason why Anki works so well is because every time when you review a flashcard or a Q&A card as I called it, you reset your forgetting curve. That is, you started over here, remembering something, and then your knowledge started dropping, but then when you see that again, bloop, you just hop up and you remember it again. And the next time your forgetting curve becomes a lot slower. So it takes a lot longer until you forget something. So let's say the first time you review the card again after 10 minutes, then if you remember it, then you review it again after four days, after four months, and after a year, and then your forgetting curve becomes so slow that you will almost never forget the stuff that you learned. In this video, I explained to you that there are two key components to learning something, memorization and understanding. I focused on memorization in this video and explained a few study methods that don't work, and then I showed you one study method, based on Anki, which works very well even if you have attention problems. The reason why Anki works so well even for someone who has attention problems, such as myself, is because it actively forces you to interact with the program and constantly make decisions by pressing these little buttons. In this video I didn't really give you a full tutorial on how to use Anki and how I personally use it to my advantage, but if you would like me to make such a tutorial just let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new in this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel somewhere down there. I wish you best of luck with acquiring and memorizing new knowledge and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.